It's time to turn our attention to the Buffalo Bills week two matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders. And I'm joined by Locked On Raiders host, your boy Q, to discuss it today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I am your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are, those of you who would never miss a single episode. I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. I'm Joe Marino, host of the Locked On Bills podcast. I'm joined by your boy Q, the outstanding host of the Locked On Raiders podcast. We're here to get you ready for this Bills Raiders matchup week two in Buffalo, the home opener for the Buffalo Bills, the second road game of the year for the Raiders to start things out. They're staying the week in West Virginia to be on the East Coast. Q, good to be on with you. Excited to talk about this football game. Yeah, man, it really is. And it's crazy that we're already talking about week two, right? <laughs> the NFL, it just seems like we were talking about the offseason and training camp and preseason. And now here we are talking about week two matchup. And this is a heck of a matchup, man. Uh, Raiders of Bills, this is going to be fun. Like you mentioned, the home opener for Buffalo. Very excited about it, man. Glad to be here with you. Well, the Raiders enter this game 1-0. They get a division road win over the Denver Broncos in week one. The Bills fall to the Jets in week one, 0-1, oh and one, and that kind of sets the stage for us to get into the biggest storyline for each team. Q, what is it on the Raiders side of things? Well, you know, I think it's cleaning up what they they did uh, not so well in uh, in uh, in Denver in Week One and kind of build on it. You know, try to try to really build on what they did successfully. And so, one of the big emphasis throughout the course of training camp and preseason was trying to create turnovers. And so it's funny, after I watched that game on Monday night between Buffalo and New York, I kept thinking, okay, well, the blueprint is there, right? And so this is what your emphasis has been all training camp, all preseason, got to get your hands on the ball, got to get your hands on the ball, got to affect the guy that's got his hands on the balls in the quarterback. Okay, well, on Monday, you saw that that worked for the Jets, but the Jets have an outstanding defense. The Raiders do not. So, okay, where do they stand, right? So I feel like the biggest storyline going into this game, can the Raiders actually practice what they've preached all offseason in training camp, which is go and get the ball? Josh Allen clearly will put the ball in harm's way, give you an opportunity, but you've got to be good enough to go make the play. Q, let's build off of that for a second here because that's going to be a big storyline is how Josh Allen bounces back after turning over the ball four times against the Jets. You mentioned, obviously, there's some differences between the Raiders and the Jets and how they both right. play defense. The Jets are a very patient group. They like to play coverage, rush four, and they've got the personnel to get pressure with four and really flood those coverage lanes with seven players. Now, we all know about Max Crosby, one of the elite players in the entire NFL, but what can you tell us about not only this Raiders pass rush, but who they have in that back seven that um, can help the Raiders achieve this goal of trying to get Josh Allen to give him the ball. Well, see, that's the big thing. We, everyone knows about Max Crosby, and Max Crosby showed up to the party against Denver, but you know there wasn't really a whole lot of help outside of that. You know, They went and got the rookie Tyree Wilson out of Texas Tech. He looked like he was a rookie that didn't have any training camp, right? So he's going to be kind of you know slow into getting into the groove of things. Chandler Jones... Uh, I don't think he's going to be playing this week. I'm sure he probably will never play for the Raiders again. Uh, there's a lot to, of, of strange behind that situation, and we don't really know what's going on, so we really don't talk about it too much, but uh, he won't be out there. So uh, really, it's, it's, it's who's going to step up, right? Jerry Tillery stepped up a little bit. He's a versatile guy that could play on the inside and the out. Uh, but, you know, he, he, he really Max Crosby needs a, a bookend guy. He needs a guy that's going to compliment him all the time because he's going to give maximum effort just like his name, but 
he's got to have someone that's going to help him out. As far as guys that can go make plays, I mean, they've got a rookie out there that I'm sure the Bills are going to test early and often in Ja'Korian Bennett, who's, well, he's a physical guy. Yeah, I think he's going to be a really good cover corner, but he's also got a, he's a guy that, that draws a lot of penalties. So, you know, I think that Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and, you know, Gabe Davis are going to try to attack that and see what the rookie has, and, and I don't blame him for that. And then they have the Wiley veteran Marcus Peters on the other side. So, you know what he's all about. He's going to, you know, he's going to, Make plays for you. You're going to be happy. And then he's going to get burned a couple times. But that's just kind of feast or famine when it comes to Marcus Peters. So they have guys, but they're not the Jets. The Jets have an outstanding defense on all levels. The Raiders are not there. They would love to be there, but they're not there. So they're going to have to try to pick their moments when Josh Allen gives them an opportunity and see if they can take advantage of it. But I know that protecting the ball is going to be a major storyline for the Bills this week as well. Oh, you know it, Q. The big storyline for the Buffalo Bills is how does Josh Allen bounce back in this football game? Disappointing opening night for Josh Allen against that Jets defense, a defense that had his number last year. And I know there's a lot of reaction to what happened Monday night, but if you watched either Jets game last year, it's a pretty similar script. And for Josh, it's about him settling in and playing smart football. Uh, we all saw a very immature quarterback on Monday night football and you know, Josh is typically great on primetime going into that game, 107 passer rating on primetime. That's the best in NFL history. It was just a really unique circumstance against that Jets team week one, Josh wanting to put on a show and he just didn't play smart ball. And how does he correct that going into week two? And obviously the big storyline with Josh was the four turnovers, four egregious turnovers. Right. When you watch the tape, it's worse than that. It was watching the progressions and the throws that he chose not to make, right? The turndowns where his eyes were, uh, not really trusting the pocket and escaping clean pockets and running into some pressure. There was a lot of decision-making errors, whether it was the throws he chose to make or the throws that he chose not to make, not to mention putting himself on the line. We've, we've come accustomed to Josh Allen and highlight real runs, but there's so many instances where those are unnecessary, where, He's either gotten the first down, just slide, or, I mean, what was the one? He's five, six yards short of the first down. He's trying to jump over three guys. I mean, come on now, Josh. Right, He's got to right. play smarter. I think the word that I keep going back to in that performance is just an immature quarterback, and how he corrects that going into this Raiders game at home is going to be critical because you feel like this is a game from the Bills' perspective that they should be able to handle their nine-and-a-half-point favorites right now at home in their home opener. But I'm sure Raiders fans are looking at this game right now and saying, Bills are beatable. And yeah. that's because Josh Allen and his propensity to turn over the football is peaking right now. And that's got to change real quick for the Bills to uh, win a game that I think a lot of people think they're supposed to win. You know, what I saw that stood out to me a lot on that Monday night game was the fact that Stephon Diggs was on the sideline and talking to Josh Allen, he kept pointing at his head. Be smart, be smart, be smart. And that kind of alludes to what you just said right there. You know, I guess it's the thing that, and you know better than I do, the whole team knows it. They know his abilities. They know how great he can be. But at a time, he he, he kind of gets in that mode of, I got to go get it done by myself. But he's got a really good team yeah. around him. And some sometimes you just, you know, it's, it's okay making deposits instead of, you know, yeah. going for the home run and uh, getting the big bank. Yeah, taking the profits, the name of the game for Josh Allen on Monday yeah. night against the Raiders and Patrick Graham coordinating that defense. All right, in just a moment, Q and I are going to discuss the matchups that can decide the game. Looking forward to that conversation. But first, I need to tell you about Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. So don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using our promo code Locked On at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com promo code Locked on. All right, Q, let's get a little bit more into the weeds with this football game and focus in on the matchups that can decide the game. And for me, my eyes go right to Max Crosby, man. Yeah, yeah. A special, special, special football player. I don't think he gets enough credit out there. We don't talk about edge rushers in the league. It's Miles Garrett. It's the mm -hmm. Watts. It's the yep. Bosa's. 
It's Parsons. Crosby's right there, man. This guy, the way that he impacts football game is special. And it's the variety of pass rush that he brings. He can win with speed. He can win with flexibility. He can win with power. He's got an array of pass rush moves. His vision is impressive. I mean, I think that's an underrated component of talking about pass rushers is vision. How do you read the set of an offensive tackle and then know how to attack it to get to the quarterback? I think Max Crosby does that so well. And just an absolute steal of a football player that they're able to draft and develop, and he's turned into an absolute star. Well, the weak link of the Bills' offense is the right tackle, Spencer Brown. And Spencer um, has had some challenges throughout the years, and most of his challenges have been with guys getting to his edges and being able to kind of soften those edges and be able to get around him. Well, against the Jets, John Franklin Myers really challenged his anchor with some bull rush. And if you can easily get around him and you can easily get through him, that's a problem. And and Spencer's a very gifted athlete, 6'8", 35-inch arms, unbelievable movement skills, but he's not been able to put it together. And my goodness, Max Crosby across the line, to me, is an absolute nightmare matchup. I think if the Raiders are going to really get an upset here on the road, dominating that matchup is going to be critical. And it's about what the Bills are going to do to help Spencer Brown. What type of help are you willing to give him? Chippers, extra yeah. you know, tight ends, uh, widening those line those alignments to, to make that path longer. The Bills are going to have to get creative with how they help Spencer Brown because this is a major mismatch, in my opinion, with Crosby for the Raiders against Spencer Brown with the Bills. You know, and the funny thing about it is I think one of the big mis- uh, not mismatches, but matchups in general in this game is going to be who's going to help out Max Crosby because the Bills can focus in on Max Crosby mm-hmm. and say, okay, don't let 98 wreck the game. So who's going to be out there and who's going to help? Who's going to uh, attack the the offensive line? And I really think that, you know, this game is going to be won and lost in the trenches. Uh, there's other matchups that I look at that are, you know, exciting as well, like Stephon Diggs against Marcus Peters or Stephon Diggs against Ja'Cory Bennett or, you know, Gabe Davis. I think those, those are always kind of nice matchups as well, kind of, you know, subplots to the story. But really, I think it's all in the trenches. And I think that the Raiders have to do everything that they can to make Josh Allen uncomfortable and maybe make him, you know, throw a couple passes that maybe he shouldn't. Some ill-advised passes, which, again, we know, we've seen firsthand, and you know better than I do, that he'll have a tendency to do. I mean, he, he what, turned the ball over 17 times a year ago, and he's already turned the ball over four times uh, this year. So, yeah, I mean, he'll put the ball in harm's way. You can get a strip sack here and there. So, you know, there's all kind of different things to like, but it really, to me, it starts and ends in the trenches, right? I know Max Crosby's there. I know he's going to give you everything he's got. Who else is going to step up? How are they going to attack that that Bills offensive line? And how are the Bills going to, you know, slow that slow that pass rush down to Max Crosby? I think that the biggest matchup definitely has to be in the trenches. Can the Bills out physical the Raiders? Can the physical again the Raiders out physical the Bills? I mean, it, it to me, it's all going to be won and lost right there in the trenches. Q, who's the call out players for you on that D line? I mean, I'm certainly familiar with Tyree Wilson and Bilal Nichols yeah. and Jerry Tillery. Obviously, Chandler Jones, the weirdest story in the NFL right now that nobody yeah. knows how to discuss. It's just extremely strange. But when you when you're looking for those guys to step up along with Max Crosby, who is it? Who are those players? I mean, that's it, right? I mean, Jerry Tillery, again, he started on the outside last week against Denver, which was kind of a shock to me. I thought that maybe the rookie Tyree Wilson, even though he only had a few snaps in training camp. So, you know, if I knew he'd be limited, I thought maybe he'd get an opportunity. Uh, But Jerry Tillery started on the outside. I know he pops inside. And and then, as you mentioned, Bilal Nichols is there. Uh, they they drafted Byron Young out of Alabama. Uh, And I believe Buffalo has a Byron Young, too, don't they? <laughs> don't they have... Did they, 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 they didn't draft him? No, the other one's with the Rams. There's two okay. of them, but yeah. yeah there's two Byron yeah. Youngs. I knew, yeah. Okay, there you go. So, uh, yeah, so they drafted him uh, out of Alabama, so he's going to contribute as well. But really, that's the thing. I mean, the Raiders are looking for that guy. Who else is going to be the dude who's going to step up and help out? Obviously, when you draft Tyree Wilson, number seven overall, the long-term plan is it for, for it to be him. But – He's coming back from the the foot uh, surgery that he had as it ended his career there at Texas Tech. Uh, and, and, you know, he came along very slowly in training camp with the Raiders and only got into one preseason game. So uh, that's what I'm really curious to see. Who is going to be that guy that's going to step up and say, I'll be that guy. I got you, Max. I'm going to be across from you. Right now, I like what Jerry Tillery brings to the table. He's not very good when it comes to stopping the run, though. So that's that's where he's a liability, and that's where a guy like a Byron Young is going to have to step up and maybe play that role, or Bilal Nichols is going to have to play a bigger role there. You know, I really would like to see 
the Raiders get some interior push. But again, we've been talking about the Raiders and some interior push for quite a while, and it hasn't really come to fruition. So we'll see. The Jets, Monday night, they had an interior push. They hadn't pushed. They had pushed all over the defensive line, right? The Raiders aren't there yet. So uh, they would like to be there. They're not there. So we'll see who's going to step up. But like I said, it's, it's, going to, it's going to be one and lost in the trenches as far as I'm concerned. Well, Q, another thing I feel like we got to get into here is Josh Jacobs, the outstanding running back for the Raiders. We know that they want to run the offense through him. I mean, just ton of volume last year, a ton of production, obviously, but off to a bit of a slow start. Denver game, 19 rushes, 48 yards. Um, still, they won the game, and, and I think maybe Jimmy G gave them a little bit more than anticipated, but we know that this offense wants to run through Josh Jacobs, and I'm sure as much as Raiders fans are excited for the amount of times that Josh Allen gave away the football, you're looking at the rushing production for the Jets, and that probably gets you pretty excited as well. 27 rushes, 172 yards yeah. against the Bills. Now, mindful of 83 of that coming on one play, and that's not okay, right? You don't just throw it away. It happened. Right. There's a misalignment issue for the Bills on that Brees Hall 83-yard run where they were in 13 personnel with three tight ends to the right of the tackle. The Bills didn't line up correctly, and they got gashed. But on the the rest of those downs, um, 26 rushes, 89 yards for the Jets. That's good run defense for the Bills. That's under three and a half yards per carry. So you're great on 26 plays, and you're terrible on one, right? And, and so how does this how does this manifest itself in this matchup against the Raiders? It's something that I'm fascinated with. Josh Jacobs, a very different type of back than either Dalvin Cook or Brees Hall, a, a guy that runs with a lot of physicality and power between the tackles and. What's interesting about the Bills and how they like to play defense is they live in sub packages. They live in nickel. Um, mm -hmm. And so you're not going to get three linebackers. You're going to get Taron Johnson, the slot corner in the box. Or even last week against the Jets, they started playing three safeties where they're bringing in Taylor Rapp as a third safety to go with Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. So you're going to have size advantages over right. the Bills. And how do you get downhill against this front? How do you put them in some conflict with lighter players? that Their linebackers are small, too. Matt Milano's like 225 pounds. Terrell Bernard, their starting Mike's like 220 pounds. You don't have a player that's not a defensive lineman that's over 225 pounds in that back seven, right? And so I'm sure they're going to be quite interested in trying to get Josh Jacobs loose into the B and C level of the defense. And so how the Bills choose to fit the run, if they're willing to play more three linebacker stuff this week, how game plan specific is their style of defense going to be? It's going to be fascinating, but I can see the Bills trying to lean into some run blitzes potentially. But Josh Jacobs and how the how the Raiders try to run the ball against the Bills and the success they have, I think, is going to be really critical in the Raiders being able to compete in this football game. Yeah, I do as well. And, and like you mentioned, Josh Jacobs didn't have a great game statistically against Denver. He's been really good and dominant against Denver for the longest. And so I think that Sean Payton and company really made sure that he didn't beat them, right? Hey, make somebody else win this game. We're going to put Pastor Tan on Devontae Adams, and then we're going to try to load up the box and slow down Josh Jacobs. And they did. And, of course, they benefited from the fact that he also missed all the training camp, had no mm -hmm. preseason action as well. This is a game where it's going to be critical for Josh Jacobs to get going. We know that Jimmy G did some good things week one, but we also know how Jimmy G butters his bread by a strong run game, a really good team around him. That's what we saw for years in San Francisco, right? That's how everything went really well. Well, we know Josh Jacobs is the engine that makes this Raiders offense go. So they're going to try to get him the rock. They're going to try to get him going and uh, get him playing at a higher level than he did in week one. I'm sure he'll have a little bit more of his legs underneath him. But yeah, they're definitely going to try to run block, get downhill and let Josh Jacobs do that. And he's really good at making guys miss, you know, in, in the hole when it looks like, OK, he should be stopped for a one yard gain or even a one yard loss. All of a sudden he's five yards up the field. Right. So he's really good at doing that. I think that there's going to be a big time effort to get him involved. And then that'll loosen up everything else as far as Devontae Adams goes. Jacoby Myers is in the concussion protocol. So I'm pretty doubtful that he's going to play. But we don't know as of yet. Things could change quick, fast and hurry. But Hunter Renfro wasn't very much involved in, in week one's game. Only had 13 snaps. So Jacoby Myers doesn't go. Expect a, a heavier workload from Hunter Renfro. But it starts and ends, I think, with uh, you know, with Josh Jacobs. And again, it goes back to what I was talking about, the trenches, right? I mean, the trenches are going to really determine how this game goes offensively and defensively. The Raiders want to get it done defensively in the trenches, and the offensive line has to get it done. One, to keep Jimmy G upright and, and uh, allow him to deliver the ball where he needs to, to Devontae and anyone else. 
and then for Josh Jacobs to get going. But yeah, there's no doubt they want to get that run game cooking with Josh Jacobs. And I do expect them to have a better opportunity to do that this week as opposed to what they did against Denver because Denver was making sure Josh Jacobs wasn't the guy that wrecked that game. All right, folks, in just a moment here, we're going to talk about the path to victory for each side. We're going to make a prediction. And I want to ask you about Jimmy G. This is a, a <laughs> new spot for Jimmy G. I want to get your thoughts on what you've learned about him so far as he, during his time as a Raider. But first, we need to tell you about Prize Picks. You got to check them out. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America and easily the most exciting way to play DFS. I love the format, it's awesome. It's just you versus the numbers. It's not you versus thousands of other players, including pros, including sharks. It's just you versus the numbers. All you do is you select two or more players, you pick more or less on their projected stats, and then you place your entry. It doesn't take long. You can make an entry in under a minute, and then the withdrawals when you win are super, super easy and quick. I love watching football, and I love watching football even more when I have a prize picks entry. It just makes it that much more exciting. So check it out. Go to prizepicks.com slash NFL and use code LOCKDOWNNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash NFL and use code NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, Q, we're going to talk about the path to victory, make some predictions, but I want to get some thoughts from you on Jimmy G. <laughs> One game so far as a Raider. What what is what's the vibe? It feels like some of the messaging from his teammates is really positive yeah. coming out of that win. What have you seen? What's the forecast here with Jimmy G in Vegas? It's funny, man. I'm glad you asked this question because when the Raiders signed Jimmy G and they was talked about that they were going to sign him, all I kept thinking was like, are you serious? Right? I mean, it's Jimmy G. He's injury prone. Okay, you're going to have some pretty boy. That I mean, that's everyone. That's all that everyone knows about him. And so I'm thinking, all right, I know he's won a lot of games, but that's probably because 49ers defense was great. They have a great run game. What is this guy really going to bring to the table? I'll tell you, man, I have been pleasantly, you know, surprised and I have no problem with being wrong, right? I mean, this dude is just one of the guys you can see that every player enjoys being around him. Uh, Josh Jacobs said after the game last week that, you know, I know he didn't have a good game statistically, but he had a key block at the end to really spring Jimmy for that that eight yard run to get a first down and and really win the game against Denver. And he said after the game, Jimmy makes me want to block harder. Like, that's my guy. I want to go out there and fight for him. Devontae wants to fight for him, right? Uh, Max Crosby, I'm glad that that's my quarterback. I mean, one of the, the even the center, Andre James, we asked him one day in a media session, you know, what can he tell us about Jimmy G? He's like, he's just one of the dudes. He's just one of the guys, right? He, he He's just... He's just he's just cool Jimmy, right? And so the guy doesn't get too high or low. He throws an interception in the end zone. Can't have that. Doesn't worry about it. Goes to the sideline. My bad, fellas. I'll get it back. No, no sweat. You know, he's not panicking. He's not hitting the red, you know, hitting the the whatever, just like the the I don't know. He's not getting nervous. He's not anything. Just it's it's funny, man. He's just he's just like chill. And sometimes you you almost look at a guy like that and you think that, oh, this dude doesn't care. You know, he really cares, but he just doesn't get too high or low in the moment. So uh, I really I really enjoyed the the time getting to kind of cover Jimmy G and, and get to see who he is. But clearly, man, that the team really does like this guy. Yeah, I mean, for some of the criticism that Jimmy G gets, and I think some of it's deserved. I mean, he's been right. to big stages. He's played in a Super Bowl. He's played in NFC Championship games. Like he's been in different systems. I I, I would think at this point in his career, just take things in stride and go play. And his familiarity with Josh McDaniels and the style of offense that the Raiders want to run certainly is a, is a major benefit for him to be able to step in and, and perform, right? It's not like you look at all these different starting quarterbacks across the league and new new situations, and you start to think to yourself, well, how long is that going to take? Well, right. Not not much with, with Jimmy G being able to acclimate himself uh, to McDaniels and, and the Raiders. All right, let's get into what's the path. What's the path for these teams to win the football game Q, I'll start here. Josh Allen taking care of the football. I mean, yeah. I think it just comes down to that. I, I'm, I mean, I, I love football. I love getting into the weeds with it, studying it, talking about it. Sometimes it's pretty simple, man. Take mm -hmm. care of the football. You're at home. You're a nine and a half point favorite as we speak right now. You got a talented roster. I think you can outmatch the Raiders in a lot of different ways. It's your home opener. I mean, don't be yourself. And I think that's what happened to the Bills against the Jets. They had to beat the Jets and then they had to beat themselves. And that's just uh, too much to do. And I mean, Zach Wilson coming in, the Bills have a 10 point lead at halftime. Josh just kept giving them the football. It's that right. simple. The Bills take care of the football. 
I think they get their first win of the season at home. Yeah, and I think that the 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 turnovers is 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 massive, right? It's something that I've talked about quite a bit this week so far on the show. Just you know, hey, if you can go out there and you can create those turnovers, you're going to give yourself an opportunity. I really think one of the biggest keys to this game for the Raiders is surviving the first 15 minutes. I feel like the Buffalo Bills are going to come out fired up. It's their home opener, right? They didn't have a good showing on Monday Night Football. Everybody was watching. We know the adversity that happened with the Jets, and I was super shocked that the Jets won that game. They did. We saw it in, in, in walk-off fashion with a punt return in overtime. So I just think that they're going to come in wired up, amped up, and they're going to punch the Raiders in the mouth multiple times. Can the Raiders survive those punches in the mouth, right? I mean, that's really, I think that's what it boils down to. They didn't get off to a great start last week against Denver. Their defense played better in the second half and really helped them stay in that game and give them an opportunity to win. But Buffalo is not Denver. Buffalo can score quick, fast, in a hurry. They have playmakers on all levels. I mean, and Josh Allen is a damn good quarterback. I think he's going to go out there with a purpose. I think he's going to go out there and want to prove that, hey, that was a fluke, not something that happens all the time on Monday Night Football, and and really give it to the Raiders. So, um, yeah, it's 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 about surviving those first 15 minutes, playing your keys. You've got to you got to play smart football. Oh, by the way, the Raiders had 10 penalties for 96 yards against Denver. Can't do that against the, the Bills. You can beat Denver that way. You ain't going to beat Buffalo like that. If you give them 100 yards, basically a touchdown because of penalties, you ain't going to win. You got to play smart, disciplined football. So the Raiders have a lot to clean up. That's why they're in West Virginia right now, as opposed to coming back to the West Coast and getting prepared and then flying out. They're there preparing for that right now. So uh, I think it's going to be a tough one for the Raiders to win. I don't think it's a game they can't win. But as you mentioned, what, nine and a half point underdogs right now. Uh, everyone's looking at Buffalo to have a bounce back game. I think that they're going to have a bounce back game as well. I think the Raiders have a puncher's chance, but they've got to play just about a clean game start to finish to come away with a W. It's an interesting foil because I, I hear you on the Bills coming out aggressive and trying to land some haymakers. But after you saw what Josh Allen did, is there some apprehensive? about that right you just want right. to just just play normal football i it's going to be interesting to see how that all unfolds it is time to make some predictions here uh Oof. q i got this i got this as a 30 to 17 win for the buffalo bills since 2020 yeah the bills are nine and three coming off of a loss that's a 75 percent winning percentage that's second only to the kansas city chiefs over that span oh by the way they have the largest average margin of victory coming off of a loss with an average Average win of 10.9 points, nearly 11-point win coming off of losses. I think you're going to see a hungry Bills team that's eager to put Monday Night Football behind them, get this season on track. It's the home opener. Um, a, a team in, in Vegas that was in Denver, that's in West Virginia, I'm sure they're ready to get back home. I think the Bills take care of business and actually cover that spread on Sunday afternoon. Now, I don't think that they're going to cover the spread. I just I feel like nine and a half points is so much, right? It is. And it is. The minute I say that, right? The minute I say that, all of a sudden we'll see some blowout, right? But, you know, it just to me, I always get so nervous when it comes to like an NFL game and it's almost double digits. And I always look at college games and say, okay, if it's a 15 or 20 point spread, I get nervous there. But in the NFL, nine and a half points, man, that's. That's tough, right? That's a tough cover. So I don't think Buffalo covers. I think the Raiders will find a way to really keep it close. I think they give themselves a chance at the end. I just feel like, man, Buffalo's going to find a way to win. I, I think they want to get that taste out of their mouth from, you know, what happened on Monday night. And that that's just a tough environment. I mean, you know it better than I do, but Monday night – football losing that one against the jets and then having to have their home opener and then you got to go into the belly of the beast and face that i just feel like that that's a lot to overcome and i don't know if the raiders are there yet i think that they're building a team that could probably hold up to that and and, and survive that and even win those games i just don't know if they're there yet i know max crosby's there i don't know who's across from him yet right so that's that's the biggest key for me uh i think that the raiders are, are good though in this position that at least they're playing Buffalo in week two and not week 17 when, when the weather could be completely crazy. Right. And, and the Raiders don't want anything to do with that. So I think the Raiders lose this game by what, you know, four, three or four points. I think they, you know, that, that if you want to take the, if you're looking at the betting aspect of it, yeah, go ahead and take the Raiders, Raiders take the points, but I think Buffalo finds a way to get the first win of the season and, and the Raiders keep it close and get back to, uh, to Vegas, get ready for their home opener against the Steelers. Well, both Q and I, predict the Bills win. I'm a little bit more on the convincing win. Q thinks it can be close towards the end, but um, obviously a game everyone's looking forward to on Maybe Sunday. They Maybe they can steal it, right? What do they it's, say? Oh, 
I am not dismissing our, the possibility of a Raiders win. I promise you that. I, right, I, right. I it's, it's the NFL. It's the NFL. Yeah, I respect yeah. every opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, but Me we'll, we'll see how it all goes. Folks, make sure that you keep it locked in on Locked On Raiders and Locked On Bills. We have plenty more coverage to get everyone ready for this game on Sunday. As always, we would love it if you took a second to rate, review, share, and subscribe to the podcast. Have a great rest of your day, and we look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow.